Today on The Idiot's Guide, we're talking about the real deal about statistics and what pickles have to do with it. And a party-crashing trash panda visits the press box of a major league soccer game in Utah. I'm your host, Adam Richardson, a.k.a. The Profit Hacker, and I'm joined by the man in charge, Mr. Joe Haslam. Welcome to The Idiot's Guide. If you're like me, you want to sound smarter, seem more informed, or simply just be a powerful fear-mongering lunatic, what better way to become all of these than with Just Made Up, your new daily dose of actual statistics that are completely made up. Since I started using Just Made Up, I've seen a 67 to 79% increase of statistics that are made up on the spot. Start Just Made Up today, where BS is believable. That, that that's our new fake sponsor, right? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little jingle behind it. I think. Yeah, I think that'll work. Nice. So I've got one of these fun statistics for you that goes along with our new fake sponsor. <laughs> Did you know that pickles are associated with all the major diseases of the body? Eating them breeds war and communism. They can be related to most airline tragedies. Auto accidents are caused by pickles. And there exists a positive relationship between crime waves and consumption of pickles. Here's the statistics. Okay. It's not even fair. Nearly all sick people have eaten pickles. The effects are obviously cumulative. Yeah. 99.9% of all people who die from cancer have eaten pickles. 99.8% of all soldiers have eaten pickles. 96.8% of all communist sympathizers have eaten pickles. You're starting to scare me, Joe. 99.7% of the people involved in air and auto accidents ate pickles within 14 days preceding the accident. <laughs> 93.1% of all juvenile delinquents come from homes where pickles are served frequently. Oh, I think I have four pickle jars in my fridge. Okay. Now here, <laughs> here are some additional evidence of the long-term effects of eating pickles. Okay. Oh, of all the people born in 1913 who later dined on pickle pickles, there has been a 100% mortality rate. Oh man. All the pickle eaters born between 1923 and 1943 have wrinkled skin, have lost most of their teeth, have brittle bones and failing eyesight. If the ills of eating pickles, pickles have not already caused their death. I was going to say, yeah, like, <laughs> there's so, not many left of those years. Even more is a report from medical specialists, rats force fed with 20 pounds of pickles per day for 30 days, developed bulging ab- abdomens. Their appetites for wholesome food was destroyed. Oh man. Did you know that pickles were so dangerous? Devastating. They I mean they they cause everything. I feel like I've been lied to my whole life because I really like pickles, but they're linked to so much tragedy. Beware of pickles. You should not have pickles in your home because they will cause your kids to become juvenile delinquents. I mean, okay, I'm going to push back. (laughs) (laughs) Now, hopefully at this point, our listener is screaming at us, what the crap are you talking about? (laughs) This is the danger of statistics. And this this pickle story, if you have taken any statistics, statistics classes before, you have heard this story. You have heard the... The pickle story. Uh, And that's because it's one of the first lessons you learn in statistics is that statistics can be easily manipulated to prove your point. Yeah, I agree. And it's very dangerous. We see a lot of the examples and some of the things we're going to talk about today are controversial uh, because of this very reason, statistics and what goes on behind it. But 
you know, when we're talking about pickles, I read all those statistics. The problem is it's not a causatory relationship. It happens to be corollary, but it's not causatory. Those are really big, expensive words. (laughs) Um, Can you unpack that a little bit? For our list, I don't know if our listener is, uh, you know, what grade they're in. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Uh, So causatory means that there is a cause and effect. So eating pickles causes communism. (laughs) It just... Excellent choice. It feels weird to say that. It just rolls off the tongue. (laughs) Uh, Corollary is when you have a lot of data... And there's some kind of common correlation here. They, they seem to relate to each other. Mm -hmm. Now there is somewhat of a corollary function here, but realistically it's, there are just so many pickle eaters. It's such a common food. Of course it's going to be high when you're looking at specific groups who eat pickles, but you're looking at it from the backwards You're looking at the statistics backwards. You're looking from result to cause as opposed to cause to result. Hmm. And that's, that's the problem with a lot of statistics today. Well, I I mean, I, I I feel like, I mean, there's a lot of truth in what you said about pickles and how outrageous all of those things are that, I mean, that it's responsible for. And Yet I still have a, a real deep affection for pickles, you know. So well, and and you know. to save the pickle industry here, it doesn't actually do any of those things that I mentioned at the top <laughs> of the episode. It I mean, you could probably that. gorge yourself to death with pickles, maybe. You know, yes, like, I'm sure if you, you could drown in pickle brine, you know, like. <laughs> if you force fed rats twenty pounds of pickles, yes, they will get enlarged abdomens. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> It's, and, and that's the thing, it's obvious. And we see this a lot with uh, like cancer warnings or things like that on foods is if you feed an animal a crazy amount of a substance, of course it's going to have negative effects. Did you know that bananas, and this one's real, that bananas are actually radioactive? Really? Yes. So they yeah, from all the nuclear testing years no, ago. No, no, <laughs> they naturally contain a radioactive chemical. I should have looked this up. I I don't remember what the chemical is. Uh, but at the end of this, I mean, the whole point of this is you guys need to do your own research. So go and look up what that chemical is in bananas that causes it. I think it's like you know twenty three percent radioactive. No, I was just making that up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, but the amount of bananas you would have to eat in order to have radiation poisoning from the banana is so astronomically high. You would die of engorgement of eating before any kind of radioactive poisoning would hit. That's bananas. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, with the puns. Oh, Quite All right, funny. so I, I'm going to throw one in there, like real quick, just as an example, um, because I really don't have as as many cool examples. I feel like uh, mine is toothpaste, and uh, it was uh, kind of a historic one about my, I'm in marketing, so I get to pay attention to this stuff and. Um, a good old brand. I'm not going to speak poorly because they're great and they do great. They just got a slap on the wrist for this because they did it wrong. Um, Colgate in 2007 did a survey and uh, they actually posted this and it was on their in their commercials and in uh, on the box that their toothpaste comes in. It says 80% of, uh, let me see here, let me make sure. 80% of dentists recommend their product. <laughs> And that was, um, though it, there is some truth to it in how they structured the survey, it uh, it definitely led completely down the path to get them to that 80%. So, Well, I think even beyond that, do you know any dentist who wouldn't recommend toothpaste? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I think 80% of dentists are going to say, I don't care what toothpaste Use toothpaste. It'd be like, you know, you do this survey and the, and the survey has 
Colgate is the only option that's actually toothpaste. Everything else is like dog food, yeah. you know, like garlic paste, you know, just. Uh. <laughs> Could you imagine brushing your teeth with garlic paste? Like I, I get it. Like some people do the whole charcoal stuff, and you see those people with like the, you know like you know pristine white teeth after their mouth is completely black and it looks disgusting. And I'm like, ooh, do I want to try that? No, I don't want to. I'm stick to Colgate because eighty percent of dentists recommend it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, and see that's the thing. I mean these statistics. Now that one is they obviously led and biased their uh, participants mm-hmm. to get to a result, but that's the thing is, of course, dentists are going to recommend a toothpaste. They're going to recommend any toothpaste. Yeah. If you're not brushing your teeth, they're going to say, "Go and get a toothpaste. This is the one that I like." Doesn't matter if you want a different one, get a different one, but use toothpaste. And and that's the thing. I mean, when you when you look at some of the stats of these pickles, you know, of all the people born in 1913 who later died, dined on pickles, there's a hundred percent mortality rate. Well, it's because that's 110 years ago. <laughs> of course, everyone's dead from 110 years ago. The oldest person alive right now is 116 years old. Now, whether they ever ate a pickle, I don't know. But that's still rounding up. That would be like ninety nine point nine 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 versus eight billion. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, of course that's going to be true, but it doesn't mean that pickles actually caused it. It just means everyone's dead and people who ate a pickle were in that group. <laughs> You know, another one of the big ones, and I don't know if you have this on this on your list, but is autism. And this is one of the con- controversial mm. ones. You know, there are a lot of people who say vaccines cause autism. And that is the biggest example, in my opinion, of this bad statistic. Because what they say is that of all the people who have autism or, or a large percentage of the people who have autism, they had a vaccine. Therefore, vaccines cause autism. Well, the problem is, that's exactly from this pickle statement. 93% of all juvenile delinquents come from homes where pickles are served frequently. Well, pickles are a common thing. Everyone's going to eat pickles. Yeah. So it's not that pickles are causing juvenile delinquency. It's that pickles are common. And so when we talk about vaccines and autism vaccines everyone gets vaccinated yeah and so if there's autism in there it doesn't mean there's any causation it just means that vaccines are super common well i also think that you know over the years i mean we've had some conversations about this that most individuals um from you know i mean you go back just 20 years and you have a lot of misdiagnosis or not diagnosed autism. And, you know, and so later on in life, individuals are discovering that they're like, holy moly, like, this would have totally helped when I was in school, you know, like, all of these, you know, self discoveries that they've kind of had to figure out. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it, it, it seems that, okay, well, like, we have this problem, we have all of these things. And, and as, as we move forward in, in our generations, we have better, better services, better technology to be able to test and discover these things. It doesn't mean that it wasn't there before or that our generation, you know, I mean, like, dude, I was vaccinated with so much stuff, so much stuff. Oh my goodness. Like, you know, I mean, like, why is it that, you know, my generation, it it just has to do with the visibility of everything, I guess, you know? You have more data to be able to right. do the do the right thing. So if you're just taking it on this narrow path on this bias survey, then you bet it's going. You're going to have that link. You're going to tie it together in a nice, pretty bow. And you know, I I think, yeah, I I guess that's that's kind of the way I look at it. Is just yeah. you know, yeah. And and part of the problem comes in with. There, there was really only one purveyor of the vaccine causes autism uh, mythology. I'm just going to call it a mythology because it's okay. in no way true. 
Uh, and so he decided to write a book and create this following using bad statistics, using these pickle statistics. And all he had to do was convince a bunch of people and the following grew and grew. Mm-hmm. And so long as his statistics were, you know, looking right, then great. People would believe, but that's the problem is that those statistics aren't real. They're, they're not, he's taking the wrong look at the statistics and because people just listen instead of actually doing their own research, we run into problems. Yeah. Now pickles. Okay. That one's easy. That one's just funny, but there are a lot of serious conditions. There are a lot of serious issues that we deal with on a daily basis that if we're not actually doing the research ourselves and just believing someone else with these statistics, we can run into a lot of problems that we're following something that we shouldn't be following because it was bad information. That's why it's so vital. So vital. Anytime you hear statistics, anytime you hear a theory, a hypothesis, uh, anything like this, you go and look at the research yourself, look at the raw data and understand where it's coming from. And this comes to anything. You know, any kind of financial, so financial advisors, oh, here are the statistics. This model means you're going to be making millions of dollars in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Look at the data. Don't just trust them. They're, They're trying to sell you on something. Look at the data. Look at the information because that's where it's really going to come from. And if you are looking at the raw information, you're going to be able to come to a better conclusion. You could believe them. You could not believe them, but you've come to a better conclusion based on your own research of the data. It's kind of an elephant in the room, but uh, I'm, I'm curious. I, I, I maybe I, I didn't even mean to basically most accurately display this, but the, the phrase, this uh, um, Fear mongering, power power hungry, <laughs> fear mongering lunatic. Um, so, you know, like I, I think about some recent things at pandemic um, that statistic wise just was was all over the place, and and I think that you know both sides of that really perpetuated um, the the problem in this and really you know because of that canceled it out and it caused a lot of mistakes on both sides of it and and we're 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 seeing those results of that of those emphasized mistakes that they're like whoops like i i wasn't quite sure you know and so now we're going like well now what do we do you know who's who's responsible for what and and really honestly we just kind of got to go like okay dust off Let's put this back together again. Hopefully, maybe some people could be held responsible for some of the garbage, but you know, but you can see in that how absolutely dangerous it can become when you have the wrong data that you're running with, or or just the the you don't have enough information, and yet you're you're telling everybody the sky's falling. Right. And, and I think part of the problem is, you know, we're always getting more information. We're getting more data. Uh, and there's a piece of pride that goes along with that of not wanting to back down on your stance, yeah. even in the face of new information. And that happens to everyone. Every human being on earth runs into this problem, no matter how, humble from a religious standpoint or how uh, respectable or devoted to science on the science side. Uh, Cause those are generally the big opposites when it comes to a lot of things mm-hmm. there. It's you're going to get that pride in there that you don't want to admit that you didn't have all the information and your conclusion that you came to previously, which may have been correct based on the previous information is now incorrect based on new information. And so you double down on your original conclusion, ignoring the new information. Yeah. There was uh, an old, uh, this comes from uh, ancient Greece. Uh, I can't remember his name. I wish I could remember it. I should have looked it up. But again, this is the idiot's guide. Look it up yourself. (laughs) 
Um, there was this uh, Greek, try this one at home, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know what you would call him, medicine man, philosopher. Uh, not a philosopher. He was he practiced alchemist. Practiced medicine. I'm using air quotes. Okay. Uh, and he would only allow certain people to come into his practice. And so he had to interview people before he would let them come in. But he boasted a 100% cure rate. Mm. And so people from everywhere came to see him, but he only made sure to admit the people that he could actually cure. (laughs) If there was an illness that he couldn't cure, he turned them away. Yeah. But that made sure that he was always boasting a 100% cure rate. So this isn't just a modern thing. Yeah. This, this is something that is human history for a long time. And, and part of that is that, that pride and arrogance that you don't want to be wrong. And I think part of it is a little bit of humility to stand down and say, okay, I was wrong. You know, it's, it's not a problem to be wrong when you have new information. You know, politicians run into this a lot. They call them flip-floppers if they change their position. Well, if you've got new information as a politician, change your position if it warrants it. But there's fear that they're going to lose their political status if they change their position with new information. And it all comes down to that pride. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw another elephant that's in there. There's a couple elephants here. Sorry, guys, it's not a lot of space in here. Um, <laughs> so this one, I, I think you, you, you've got a lot of homework on, and, um, but, but I think the biggest part about it is that, you know, even recently, like we were talking about this, and I am seeing stuff left and right just dismantling things. And I'm like, you go like, yes, like this data is, is just insane. And so, you know, no guys, it's not UFOs. I'm sorry. That's, that's a different (laughs) podcast episode. We'll talk about that. But today, um, the, the, the newest, bestest, um, descriptive that's most politically correct is called climate change. They couldn't call it global warming anymore because, well, I mean, (laughs) cold weather, well, <laughs> and and I hate that. Now, this is one thing where I slightly disagree with with science. You know, I am generally in agreement with science. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, scientific um, um, conclusions. Uh, but this is one where I slightly differ, um, and just because I've done my own research on it, and that's why I differ slightly from the conclusions that are currently being made. Now, global warming. The Earth is warming. I have, and I'm, dun, I'm dun, dun. showing Adam the graph right here that shows the temperature change year over year from the median. It is getting warmer. You're, are you talking about like since what the, year? This is from 1880. So yeah. over 100 years. 100 plus years, 140 years. Okay. It is, there is no doubt that the earth is getting warmer. We need to go back to calling it global warming. We cannot just call it climate change. Yeah. Climate change is a bad name. I think climate change was more, uh, you know, in line with their, you know, the the equity uh, and inclusion. Sort well, of <laughs> it was because there were so many bad statistic readers okay. who said it's cold this year, so it can't be global warming. It's still snowing. One of, one of my charts that I looked at for like, okay, this is a telltale sign of a really bad statistic is a, a chart like that. And that's why I asked the years because there's a chart that I have here that talks about, you know, like, oh, it's talking about interest rates and their interest rate in, you know, like skyrocketing over the course of, you know, from 2008 to 2012. It just, this thing looks like it's like about, it looks like a ski jump, guys. Don't worry. It's, it's massive, except for all of it is within, uh, 3.14% to 3.152. So wow. over the course of four years, it's literally 0.0 or point zero twelve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. So when I looked at, so I, I broke this down into segments of, uh, decades. Mm-hmm. And so every 10 year segments, uh, and what I wanted to see, what, 
it was there some kind of pattern to what stages we're looking at as far as what that warming is. Now, what's really interesting to me is that uh, of each of the years that I tracked, I looked for, I did another graph that shows uh, of that 10 year cycle, what number year, so like 1991, 1992, so one, two, three, et cetera, uh, had the highest temperatures. And over the last 140 years, uh, year three, five, or sorry, year three, five, six, and eight were all the highest increase years. So again, of 140 years, year eight, so that, that would be like 98, uh, 2008, all those had three in each, so three decade cycles had eight as the highest temperature year. Uh, same for six, five and three both had two. And so these were the highest cycles and there seems to be, you know, whether there's some cause there or whether it's just coincidence, uh, those had the highest. Now, what's really interesting to me is that the ninth year of any 10 year cycle for the last 140 years, never the highest ever. (laughs) So for 14 different cycles, nine, so 99, 2009, whatever, never the highest increase. And so it's the idea that when people have these cold years, it could be a 1999 where, yeah, it's not the most increase in temperature over the globe. And so they use that and say, it's not warming. So is 2023 a cyclical year, I guess? 2023, based on what I look at. So in... I mean, 100 years is a pretty good data point. It is. I mean, when we're looking at micro trends. Yes. We'll get into the macro trends here in a minute. Uh, But 1950, 1960, 1970, and 1980 all are... So that would be uh, 53, 63, 73, and 83 all had significant increases in that third year. Okay. And so really what we're seeing is it's really hot this year because this is an extreme year. We've seen this through the last 140 years. But 2024, it's going to be nice and 2024 easy. would potentially, if, if patterns follow. Mild. It will go down. Now, it's still a significant increase over 140 years ago but it'd be less than 2023. Hmm. And so that's the important thing to note here is that yes, it'll be cooler than this year, but it's still a whole lot hotter than it was a hundred years ago. Okay. So the, the globe is warming. We are getting hotter. And so where I differ from science and where my research says it's different is why. And the question is, why is it getting warmer? Now, up until probably 10, 15 years ago, we really didn't have a lot of historic data. We really just had the last hundred years, the last thousand years maybe mm-hmm. of history to know what's been going on. Now we have, as of 2020, a much greater history over the last 66 million years of temperatures and CO2 levels and different things like that to see, is it really that? Now, the only thing that scientists saw over the last thousand years and seeing a warming trend was CO2 levels increasing. That was really it. And so, yeah, of course, that's the natural conclusion. CO2 levels causing increasing temperatures. That's what CO2 in the atmosphere does. It seems to make sense, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. Sure. And so a lot of work was done to reduce CO2 emissions. Uh, my problem is, is now that I'm looking at this new information, and so this comes from, oh, I, I did this really small and I don't know why I did that. <laughs> uh, the International Ocean Discovery Program. Okay. And so this is their their graph. What they did is they took uh, a lot of different stats. I mean, the, the stats pages are huge. I think they've got 23 individual uh, statistic, um, uh, what's the word, uh, raw data sheets 
to be able to pull all this out. They did a ton of research on it. And their goal was to look at what was the temperatures and what were the CO2 levels in each one of those periods. Okay. And so what I see on this is that there are periods where there's an increase in the overall CO2 levels. So between say 500 and well, between 500,000 years ago to now, uh, on this graph, it shows that there are levels of increased CO2 and then the CO2 levels go down and, or an increase in CO2, earth is warmer, CO2 goes down, earth is cooler. Now, the problem with that is we do see that trend, but it only the, the parts per million on that, uh, is, uh, about 250 parts per million is the highest that it gets to in those temperature ranges. But the highest temperature that it gets to is about two and a half degrees Celsius above where we're at right now. So much lower carbon levels, Mm -hmm. much higher temperatures than what we're seeing now. Because right now we've got about 400. uh, I looked it up today, 417, I think was the most recent uh, CO2 parts per million level. Okay. But our temperatures are only about one degree, 1.06 uh, Celsius above the last thousand years. And so here again is the problem we're seeing historically CO2 levels go up, temperature goes up, but it had a much bigger impact in that time frame than it is now. <laughs> there are also a couple other periods when we're looking back. So going back to, uh, about, uh, I think it was about two, a little less than two and a half million years ago. CO2 levels higher than they are right now. So getting up into the uh, roughly 500 parts per million temperatures were actually going down during that time frame and were less than they are now. And so, and there are a couple of periods on here. I I recommend everyone to look at it so you can see what the data shows. Um, But the problem is the, the, the data just doesn't fashion out to, for me, that CO2 is the cause it may be CO2 levels are rising because of something else. Now we know that there are a lot of other potential causes of global warming, the sun, the rotation of the earth. Uh, we're talking about solar activity when I say sun. So um, sunspots or solar flares mm-hmm. uh, can cause impacts to the earth. Um, uh, the, the rotation of the earth, the axis that it tilts on uh, changes from time to time. And that can cause changes either warming or cooling. Uh, to the overall uh, Earth's temperature. And so all these things that come into play, there are so many more potentials than just CO2. And so it's not, we've got to look at the data closer and see what is really the cause of the global warming. Now, personally, I think it's just nature. Earth's just rising in temperature. I mean, if if you're looking at this chart, I mean, we're still you know, a couple hundred thousand years away from really any like dramatic change that the human existence is endangered, yeah. you know? And, and if you're looking at that and we think about like human history, at least recordable history, you're, you're talking, you know, what, 6,000 years, you know, is basically what the, the idea of the recorded human history, um, Going back, like there's, you know, all of the other elements of of Earth's existence that's there, dinosaurs and all that. And so you go back that far and you're like, okay, well, you know, during that point, you know, that this chart that he that Joe is looking at actually in, you know, includes those moments in time and how our Earth was uh, behaving during that moment. Um, I recently, like I said, I've been like, this has been a big deal. Like I was, I was learning about the expense of wind farming on the, uh, they're using ocean wind farms where they're buoying windmills like in the water. And I'm like, uh, just the cost alone is unbelievably stupid. I mean, like, Completely ridiculous. No reason for it at all. Well, we do need to find cheaper ways of getting renewable energy. Oh, yeah. And and now, while CO2 may not be causing our global warming problem, CO2 is a serious health problem to humans. Mm -hmm. If we allow these CO2 levels to continue, 
it's not, it's not going to, we're not going to die because it's too hot. We're going to die because we've poisoned ourselves. So there are a lot better reasons to get rid of these CO2 emitting energy sources than the earth is warming. We are poisoning ourselves. Yeah. We've got to find better ways and it needs to stop being an argument over, you know, what's causing it. It needs to be a, you know, how do we continue to survive? Just accept the earth is warming, accept that we are poisoning ourselves. How do we stop it? Stop looking at all these statistics and, you know, worry about what's happening in the world. Stop focusing on the pickles. Well, to think honestly that, you know, I would say in the last 200 years of our human history has seen probably the most advancements and contribution to CO2 levels, if that's oh, yeah. where you're seeing it, because of such an industrial move. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're moving to, you know, this initiative to try to reduce that in, in, in ways and in forms. But we have such a dependency on that industrial revolution that created this, that, you know, until we figure out how to eliminate that dependency or reduce that dependency then the the demand is only ever perpetually in, increasing. Yeah. So that that's that's kind of this catch twenty two is like okay, well, like it's like dieting, you know. It's like how how do we, you know, do I do I not use a light bulb more than I have to, you know? Do I do I not buy plastic products because it you know it promotes this? Yeah. Do I not eat steak because it you know cow farts are a big huge contribution to you know I like all of this stuff is. It, it it's it, it sounds ridiculous, but these are argument points that like high powered of officials are using for you know for this. But we've also seen some seriously Im- impressive advancements in our society, our agricultural I- industry, our um, I mean, just generally speaking, the advancement is moving forward. So it, it is something that if we were to collectively put our minds together and and say like let's 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 do this, I think that we can really come come to some better conclusions that wouldn't be nearly as impacting as you know our just utter dependency on the you know CO two drug lords. Yeah, and and we need to look at real real solutions now. And right now, everyone's arguing about. Is the earth warming? That is such a stupid argument. And the reason they're arguing is because everyone's using statistics. Everyone can pull statistics out of their butt. We came up with... Cow's a, butt. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we came up with a stupid fake ad for the top of this podcast off of fake statistics. <laughs> they are everywhere. We need to stop using statistics so much because they're so easily refuted and so easily manipulated and start looking at the real problems, what's really going on and, and get out of these stupid arguments. Now I know we have to move on. I'm just going to mention two other things before we go. Okay. Uh, or before we move on to the, the subtopic. So, and this part of this is to go along with human evolution. And okay. this is more scary to me than the impact of maybe CO2 causing global warming. Okay. So there is a great article on uh, smithsonianmag.com and it's called Essential Timeline Understanding Evolution Homo Sapiens. Okay, so I recommend everyone read that. It goes through from 700,000 years ago to the earliest known possible human ancestor to modern times. And one thing that was really interesting to me is when you look at the timeline of human evolution and to modern 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 humans so modern humans goes back quite a while but what we know of as today homo sapiens so not the mixtures that we saw as the evolution was happening but humans evolved very much in the coldest environments on earth neanderthals or neanderthals however you want to pronounce that Mm -hmm. evolved when it was much warmer the the early uh non-modern humans so there are three distinct groupings that weren't modern humans, Neanderthals. Um, let me look at the other name here is I can never remember this one. Um, 
it's uh, Denisovans. Those were all earlier than Homo sapiens. Um, but we have some of their DNA still today. Okay. Anyone from Europe, uh, or most people from Europe, have the Neanderthal DNA. DNA. Uh, anyone from Asia, or a lot of people from Asia, I don't mean to make generalities, uh, have the uh, Denisovan DNA. Uh, so these were earlier groups. They all evolved in warmer temperatures and died off as the Earth was reducing in temperature, and that's when Homo sapiens came to superiority. What that shows is that we potentially run the risk as Homo sapiens of becoming extinct if we don't do something about the global warming. Now, again, I don't feel that it's CO2 levels, but we need to do something to artificially cool the Earth. Otherwise, we run the risk of dying out. And so there are a lot of things that we need to do in order to continue surviving as Homo sapiens. And this is the real result. I mean, Look at the research, look at the information, find the sources, make your own conclusion. We do not, as a society, make our own conclusions enough. And that's the problem with statistics. Well, I mean, like 90% of society doesn't make, you know, like doesn't, doesn't do that. I yeah, think. I think that's a made up statistic again. I, I told you I'd take a daily dose. Of it, so <laughs> I have to. It just happens now. It's natural. So the, the results are amazing with this stuff. Um, all right, so... <laughs> It's monsoon season here in Utah, and uh, um, so this party crashing trash panda. Um, <laughs> I I follow soccer, so I saw this one last last week. There was a, a game that was delayed. Uh, I don't even know if the game actually. I think the game got underway after. Usually the monsoon lasts for the the, the rain that like it's downpour. Everyone else in like other rain filled cities are like, Haha, "What's this? Like you guys have a accumulative like four inches for the year, maybe you know." <laughs> and you're right, you're right. But here in Utah, this is like flash flood warning kind of rain, so it's pretty intense when it happens, and it usually happens for a few weeks each summer. And right now we're right in the middle of it, so. Last Thursday at a the beginning of the soccer game, it started pouring, and so they had to delay the game. And well, there was a raccoon that was looking for some shelter, and uh, so the, our, our our team here in Salt Lake is the Real Salt Lake Salt Lake Real, and um, you can tell who doesn't actually follow soccer in this room. I okay, I don't, but <laughs> I, I enjoy it. It's fun. I do like I do like going to a game or two. But uh, you're right, I. I don't follow soccer. My bad. It's Real Salt Lake. Real Salt Lake. Anyway, the uh, the game box or the uh, the press box. Um, this 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 raccoon just goes crashing right through the ceiling, like just looking for shelter. I'm sure, and uh, crashes right through the ceiling and uh, managed to get uh, the the stadium staff managed to kind of corner it without getting rabies and. Um, and they they released it safely uh, next to a nearby creek. So happy raccoon. Hopefully it wasn't you know you know didn't leave any babies behind. I'm sure it'll probably find them if it did. But uh, yeah, they didn't like take it down to a different county and drop it in a lake or something like that. The, the, <laughs> the creek nearby is very nearby, but taking it away from the I I our old offices used to be over by that area. I liked that because it was right next to the stadium. Yeah. Um, but I know the Creek that they're talking about. It was nearby. Definitely a safe place to put the raccoon. <laughs> All right. Where it wasn't going to get back into the stadium and involved, but yeah, if there's babies, it will be safe. Well, that's all we got, guys. I, I told you I'd be brief about the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the last part of this. And, uh, we're, we're, we're okay on time, I think. I feel good about this. But uh, we've uh, basically just reached the end of our show today. So do you have anything else or parting words before I give my parting words, Joe? No, I don't think so. Just do your own research and watch out for raccoons. Yep. And try out that new, uh, what's it called? Just made up, you know, just made up statistics. Yep. Those, are, those are fun. Those are good talking points. Really stirs up conversation. I think that's the word. Con Con I, I, I think I controversy. Yeah, I think no, I don't know. controversy is the okay, C right, word right. you're looking for. <laughs> that's what it's going to stir up. Well, guys, life's too short, so keep laughing and keep learning. And remember, 
idiots have way more fun. Check your shoes.